David needs a God encounter. And there's nothing that will enhance your prayer life more than knowing tomorrow you die. I think you've heard the term praying like a dying man. Well, that was exactly what David was doing. We can actually go right into that prayer. We can go right into that prayer this morning and that's what we're gonna do. But before I do, I want you just to reflect for one moment what he's thinking. His 200 leaders have become traitors that he trained and raised up. The whole nation rejected him. And how did he not fight for Israel conquer all the way back when he was 17, beat Goliath, and continually he delivered the, the, the nation of Israel from the hand of the Philistines and all the nations around them. They conquered them and brought peace to the land. King David led his troops, delivered those people into prosperity. He lost his palace. His own family turned against him, wanted to kill him. And the entire army of Israel is now marching down on him from Jerusalem, from Israel. How would you feel if you were in that situation? I don't know what you're facing, as I said, but hopefully it's not as bad as David's problem. Hopefully the army of South Africa is not after you. Because if they are, I'm gonna invite you to leave because we don't wanna be invaded. <laughs> but let me say this. Let me say this. Whatever you are going through today, please remember this. God loves you as much as He loves me or any other man or woman in the world. God loves you as much as He loves Jesus. You can see that in John 17, 23. Jesus Himself said that the Father God loves you and me as much as God loves Jesus. In John 17, 23. Then the Bible tells us in Matthew 28 and verse 20, Jesus said, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. And never in the Greek means because that's what never means. I'm so glad you haven't forgotten. All right, now, tell the person next to you, Jesus will never forsake you. Say, God loves you as much as He loves Jesus. All right, Psalm 63, verse 1. This is the prayer that David prayed that night before the army of Absalom and Israel arrived. He's alone with God, looking up at the stars. Here we go. Psalm 63, 1, New Living Translation. Oh God, you are my God. Now watch this. See, he puts aside the thoughts of the devil, the lies of the devil, God has abandoned you. And he comes straight out and says, you are my God. He knows he has a covenant with this God. I earnestly search for you. I guess so. My soul thirsts for you. My whole body longs for you in this parched and weary land where there is no water. I have seen you in your sanctuary and gazed upon your power and glory. David is reflecting of the times that he saw the glory, the Shekinah glory of God hovering above the mercy seat on the Ark of the Covenant in the Holy of Holies and in the temple where he would worship God. And David had the opportunity of taking the ark out of the Holy of Holies on numerous occasions and putting the ark in to the Holy of Holies once he got it back from the Philistines. That's another story. Three, your unfailing love is better than life itself. How I praise you. 
how I praise you. I will praise you as long as I live. Now look at this, he's praising God. He is not complaining, he is not whining, he is not feeling sorry for himself. There's no self pity here. This is no time for feeling sorry for yourself. If you're in dire straits and you're feeling sorry for yourself, you are defeated. You're going down. You're going down. I will praise you. See, praise, those words say, I believe in you. You are going to save me. That's what that means. I will praise you as long as I live, lifting up my hands to you in prayer. So here he is praying to God, lying on his back out in the Ephraim forest, looking at the stars, talking to God on this most lonely night. You satisfy me more than the richest feast. I will praise you with songs of joy. I lie awake thinking of you, meditating on you through the night, meditating on you through the night. Now family, to, the way to meditate on God is to meditate on His Word. God and His Word are one. If you have the Word, you have God. If you have God, you have the Word. God and His Word are one. John chapter one, verse one. In the, beginning, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Amen? So when you have the Word, hold up your Bible. Hold up your Bible. Say, I have in my hand an image, a mirror, a reflection of God. I lie awake thinking of you, meditating on you through the night because you are my helper. Because you are my helper, I sing for joy in the shadow of your wings. Because you are my helper, because you will deliver me, because you're gonna help me now, I'm gonna praise you. Because you're gonna deliver me, I'm gonna praise you. Because you're gonna help me in this extreme situation, I'm gonna worship you. How does he know God's gonna help him? Because he knows God. He knows God. He knows God's nature. He knows God's character. He knows God's integrity. He is a worshiper. He knows his God. Thank you for watching Dr. Theo's YouTube channel. We will continue to offer encouraging and life-changing highlights from Dr. Theo's past, present and future series and messages. Please take the time to like and share the videos. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe to the channel.